What's up guys, it is Sam here, and I wanted to talk about Tesla's shareholder meeting. They just wrapped it up about 10 minutes ago. So this just finished, uh, it was live on YouTube. Uh, I took a bunch of notes here, and I just wanted to cut, touch on some of the key highlights uh, that I pulled from this. Elon was there, JB Straubel was there, uh, and I think another gentleman named uh, Drew, uh, who actually had um, more input uh, from speaking than JB did. Uh, I think there was some uh, news recently that JB had been out of uh, this limelight lately or hadn't been seen, and I think that because he's fucking busy working. Um, so some super interesting stuff. Super interesting stuff. So shareholder meeting, if you have time or are interested, I recommend uh, checking it out. Uh, very, very interesting. They talked about 90 minutes. Um, Elon answering questions from say.com, I believe it is, uh, where shareholders are able to ask questions and think of it as like a Reddit, then you can click, uh, you can vote up a question and the top questions with the most votes are actually asked at the shareholder meeting or uh, different events that Tesla does. So they just wrapped it up about 10 minutes ago. Super exciting stuff. Uh, I just wanted to make this quick video. I'll probably make a couple more follow-up videos on these specific uh, areas. If you have any thoughts on any of this or want me to cover a specific topic, let me know down below in the comments. Happy to help out. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda go through this and talk about these as we go. So to start off with, um, Elon actually makes a little bit of joke, a little bit of a joke about the, there's absolutely not a demand problem. By the way, if you haven't watched my Tesla video from a couple days ago, where I talked about reality versus like what the media type TV, traditional sources of media versus like reality and how fucking distorted that that is. There's a huge delta there. They talked about that in probably six or seven different questions, which I thought was very, very interesting. Um, there's a big acknowledgement that the media as, as a whole, like the traditional media as a whole has a very um, agenda narrative that they're trying to uh, tear Tesla down or, or, or something along those lines. And what they put out is, is completely fucking different than reality. So if you want to check out that video, go back and check out the channel. It's a, one of the, the last Tesla did video I did before this. Um, so they did talk about that in the shareholder meeting, which was kind of interesting. Called that shit. Um, now, in terms of the demand, uh, Elon then went into saying that I think it was 63% of all trade-ins for the Model 3 were from non-premium vehicles. So Tesla is pulling the demand from the, the vehicles that are not in the premium segment. Not only are they outselling uh, I think one of the stats was from a vehicle delivery standpoint, they're out selling Mercedes and Lexus and Audi and BMW easily. But from a dollar amount, the dollar value of that, they're, it's even greater than that. They're the, the number one selling vehicle in the United States based on the dollar amount of sales. Uh, so that would just be like this this many number of vehicles times this average selling price together they have the great they're the the best selling vehicle in in the United States which that's not talked about it's like oh there's a demand problem or oh Elon is Twitter on Twitter again like complete bizarre not on track with reality but that's what's coming out like you know the media and barons and like fucking Wall Street Journal and Reuters and any talking head on television just completely in left field. They don't just have no fucking idea. Um, uh, then went on to mention, I'm just going to go through this in chronological order of how it was brought up in uh, the shareholder meeting. Uh, <clears throat> demand for the Model Y uh, is expected to be more than Model S, X, and 3 combined. 
uh, Tesla is estimating that the demand for the Waddle Y is going to be insane. Um, on that regard, they at the end of the um, Q and A, somebody had asked about the Gigafactory in China and how that they had estimated only five hundred thousand vehicles being produced at the Gigafactory three in Shanghai, and Elon went in to say that well, that's kind of an intermittent goal. Like that's that's like the halfway goal. But reality is they're probably going to be able to get closer to a million vehicles produced out of uh, Gigafactory uh, Shanghai. Um, then continuing that dialogue around Gigafactory um, in Shanghai, the basic structure of the building is done and they're already bringing in equipment and installing the equipment. Um, he specifically mentioned this the paint shop. Um, and a few other areas that they are bringing in equipment. That's incredible. He also mentioned that this is the fastest um, factory that's been brought online or like being built that he has ever heard of, um, which is completely incredible. And set the stage for another announcement in late 2019, probably in the fourth quarter or in the last five months of 2000. 19 for the Gigafactory in Europe, uh, which will that'll be interesting for the location of that. Um, then started mentioning that for 2019, their storage business should be easily doubling. And he made it, it was almost like he had to hedge himself in the sense that he knew people at the company would be listening or something because he was like, yeah, we're probably going to easily get to a doubling of the storage business in 2019. I mean, our internal targets are way higher, but like I can confidently say we're going to get doubling. Like that's insane. Like a doubling. I, th I don't remember what the gigawatt um, install base was for 2018, but a double and like their internal targets are um, much higher. And after that, he went into their are in the third iteration of the supercharger network, which will be expanding. Uh, he also went into their testing version number three for the solar roof and talked a little bit how the intricacies of uh, testing something like that, where you need some type of a rapid testing that will allow you to draw fairly. Uh, accurate estimates of the predictability of the lifespan of something like this in 30 years, right? So they're, they're in version three of that. Uh, he also mentioned that the pickup unveil should be late summer, which will be very interesting. He even said that this is going to be the, he states it based on his, obviously, but I think everybody should, um, like if you're doing anything in life, I think doing it for you and what you think is capable, I think is a super strong thing based on my personal life. And he was like, this is good. This is, he believes it's the coolest car or truck ever. Anybody's ever seen, um, or he's ever seen. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. So if you remember back that, well, they teased another picture, but I think it was the same picture that they teased a while back. Um, and the, Elon mentioned, that that was, I think, the front of the vehicle. If you go Google that online, you'll see the teaser image for the Tesla truck. It's very, very ambiguous of what that is, but in a what podcast Elon did a couple weeks ago, he mentioned that that was of the front of the vehicle. So that was interesting. I'm, I'm super curious to see what this pickup truck is going to look like. If it is that far off, uh, and then he also mentioned that he thinks it's amazingly cool out of like something like out of a sci-fi movie. And if people don't like it, then he's like, yeah, well, we could make a traditional truck. I mean, we know what those look like. <laughs> uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and then talking about ramping up and the different constraints uh, in the process, trying to time the amount of batteries they're able to produce with the amount of vehicles they're able to produce. And the limiting factor at this point is the number of, oh, the number of batteries they're able to produce. 
So getting further into the number of batteries they were able to produce, um, he talked about potentially getting into the mining business. Um, that was super interesting. Think about the integration associated with that. I think there's been plenty of other companies who invest in mining businesses. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what he was mentioning, but there is other large companies who will actually invest in mining companies so that they can get the um, uh, the scale that they want to be able to get to achieve things. So I think. Apple has done this, I believe, and a couple other companies that are not coming to mind at this moment, that they will invest in different mining companies so that they have the capital to be able to go do whatever it is that they need to do in mining. Um, and that was basically to increase the speed and the scalability at which they are able to produce vehicles. Uh, also, which has been alluded to multiple different times when he's spoken there's going to be a battery and powertrain day later this year i think he mentioned in the fall um and he mentioned this in regards to a question that he received about the maxwell um acquisition and there's another acquisition too that's the last point i got coming up but the maxwell acquisition was very interesting because he definitely dodged the question but did give a little bit of elaboration that it's going to impact two areas very drastically. The cost of the battery and the scaling of the battery. Uh, hugely. So that's going to be a very interesting to follow as time goes on. Uh, if you dive a little bit into Maxwell, um, there... Uh, they started testing before Tesla announced that they were acquiring them. I think in Q2, the earnings, or maybe it was Q, or some type of news um, about Maxwell before anybody was paying attention was that they were working with a large OEM and on testing their battery technology. And then in Q4 of 2018, I think it was, they had mentioned that the testing were going successful and they were going to start ramping up production. I think it was of their dry cell, um, battery cell technology. So you could find other videos that do a far better job of explaining it, but basically the, there's, I think it's the cathode on a battery it has to be sprayed with some type of solvents the need to evaporate and, and there's a drying process. So with the technology that Maxwell has, if there's say six steps in the process of making a battery, if you can eliminate or combine three of those steps, then you can shorten that, which does both things from a scaling standpoint, it allows you to scale, fail, scale faster, but also from a cost standpoint, if you can remove a couple of those steps, it reduces the cost out of there, um, which, could impact not only the the cell, but also how much they are, the capital efficiency of Gigafactory One. If they were able to reduce the amount of equipment that is needed, so the drying and I forget what the, the other pro part of the process was, actually spraying the solvents um, or whatever it is that the process is for that. If they're able to remove those parts and that's a, the equipment associated with that is pretty small, you can see how that could have a drastic impact on the cost structure, not only of the cell, but also of the efficiency of the factory because then you could put in more of the other four processes that are left. Uh, super, super interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing more information about that. Another thing that I'm really, really looking forward to more information about is Tesla insurance. And that brings up the last uh, point here is that somebody in the audience asked about Tesla insurance, which was talked about previously. And uh, Elon goes on to mention that uh, they have an acquisition to make in the insurance industry. Well, I'm assuming it's in the insurance industry re right, relating to that. So that was very interesting to see. And then on this is separate. This is conjecture, right? But when you think about how insurance um, is priced, an insurance plan is priced, 
they'll take factors like the type of the vehicle and the zip code or geographic region somebody's in or, um, excuse me, I'm not sure if they're able to do it bring in other social factors yet, but this could be very pro, this could be something that could be implemented. Um, but basically think about like you live in your zip code, right? So based on that, the insurance company will charge you a certain rate based on where you live, geographically speaking. Whether you're the best driver in your zip code or not, you still have to pay for all the shitty drivers in your area. So if you were, that's right, that has to have some type of premium. Now, if you are able to, know what your actual driving is, then the probability of crash is much lower, right? Plus you're driving a Tesla and autopilot and all this other stuff. Then um, they, they could potentially have a giant cost advantage. Plus think about the simplicity of that process. Uh, actually, the last bit that I want to talk about is the autopilot. Um, somebody had mentioned uh, a question about autopilot and um, FSD, full self-driving the feature complete by the end of 2019 and how if if Elon could elaborate on that and um, he mentioned that he can basically take his car from his home to his office uh, FSD which is full self-driving and might have a couple interventions along the way but he that he doesn't think it's a great idea to release that to the public as of right now um, but it is super thumbs up for that picture falling down. Um, it is super interesting what is going to be happening and how this is going to be impacted going forward. Um, make sure you press that subscribe button if you want to see other videos like this. That's all I've got notes on about the Tesla um, shareholder meeting. Very, very interesting stuff. They voted on a couple... Um, uh, a couple shareholder things that, and, and there was not super interesting to talk about so I didn't take any notes on that but if you guys want to hear about any one of those specific things in more detail let me know down below in the comments uh, I'll probably have a couple more videos talking about some of these topics in detail so make sure you press that subscribe button if you want to uh, hear up about those and there's the little bell notification. If you just tap that bell notification, YouTube will notify you when I post a new video. Or if you want to reach out to me, my link is in the description for Instagram. You can jump over to Instagram and say what's up and ask me any questions. If anybody is in uh, Massachusetts and wants to um, you know, get together and, uh, and they have a Tesla, let me know. Um, link is in the description. Shoot me a DM. Maybe we, I've got a drone. Maybe we can do some... Uh, a couple videos or something like that get some sweet footage appreciate you guys peace